Hello and welcome to the EEPROM line. Today's Teardown subject is this. Some of you may recognise this, in fact all of you should. For it is a television satellite receiver module, also known as an LMB, whatever that stands for. Now it's a quad version since there's four coaxial outputs. Probably for Sky TV because they're the predominant supplier of satellite television in this country and probably other places around the world. So, before we get to it, if he has an RF range of 10.70 to 12.70 gigahertz. So yeah, there's going to be some pretty hefty RF goodness in here. So, let's not turn it on, but take it apart. So here we are with the external housing. Nothing particularly amazing or special, but your standard sort of ABS plastic. Now interestingly these caps are also always plastic, but then you don't want to shield the RF signal going in here, in fact specifically in the microwave wavelength. It goes down here to the receiver circuitry and here and we have four B and C equivalent screw terminal outputs. I think the US use these cables quite a lot, but this is not but these kind of cabling is only used on satellite receivers in the UK. It also has an extendy thing so this can pull out to protect the actual ends of the cables from weather but we don't care about that. And as you can see I've had it open already. Get it open relatively easy. Especially when you've already cracked it open. Internally we're left with the actual chassis. So as I said, the front bit here is plastic and ho hollow, probably ABS. Also very tightly wrapped around to perform a good seal. Now I have torn down one of these in the past, years ago, but sadly I don't have the circuit board. It was a lot simpler than this unit. This unit has two separate modules, a back receiver portion and another portion. Both with RF points in at the top. You'll notice they're in a sort of zigzag configuration. These two go to the top PCB in here and these two down here go to the bottom PCB. So, enough blathering on, let's crack it open and see what lurks inside, and actually learn a bit about how these things work. So here we have the main circuit board, well, one of the, the smaller board on the smaller side though. Without smashing up there, let's get the light into a decent position so the camera can see. So first off we have this massive RF can here within the actual can. This is actually technically glued in with this and above the PCB is what you'd usually mount ICs in when you package them to send them off in the postal service. Now this little IC here is a linear and integrated circuit as it's called but really what it is is a multiplexer designed for these LNB applications, so it'll multiplex all the outputs and whatnot. There's not actually a lot of information on the data sheet, but it says about dual channel multiplexing with low external component counts, so it's a pretty much do everything dog chip. These are 78M08 voltage regulators, both of them, yes. We have linear 7-8 series voltage regulators. 8 volts, not a common voltage to see. Among that, 3 diodes, a mysterious IC which only has SMT part numbers and not a real part number, which is a real pain because I can't find anything on it. But I'm guessing this is going to be some kind of ASIC or controller or RF receiver chip which would then pass on the information to this chip which would then multiplex the signals before they're outputted to the devices. The one thing I must know, I do not know how these get power because, well, 
There ain't no standard power jack into this thing. It's a strange RF jacket. Now this is very interesting, this little tuning screw. So if we pull this off, we get our first look at some RF voodoo. But you'll notice the tuning screw doesn't actually go to anything. If we turn it over, we can see we've got more of this chip mounting conductive sponge and the tuning screw is just literally it affects the radius because the physical dimensions at these frequencies of the chassis or whatnot can literally affect whether the how the device performs. There's also a few other little things, insulation points and all that good jazz. And very handily the screws fell out into the RF section which completely ruins it, any form of calibration it may have had. So I move those out the way. Now what we have here is we can actually see potentially two different inputs coming in from the other board so it looks like it's multiplexed in two inputs or whatnot. And as you can see they go through these points on the PCB which I think these are technically capacitors of some kind. RF capacitor. And this is what the tuning screw links to which is this strange almost ceramic like object cylindrical thing and a 10.6 gigahertz point so this is our 10.6 gigahertz board and it's reflected on the same as we have more of this RF voodoo going on here going into these two transistors which do not look like your standard RF with the capacitors either side probably just for noise reduction and they disappear off to somewhere here, but the signals actually go off out here to where they actually seem to go into under these hard things on the board. However, this one, we can follow the trace. Bear with me while I actually try and see it with my own eyes. It goes into this, which then disappears off into this, and there's these tiny little unidentified identifiable SMT chip which will probably be some sort of pre-amplifier before they get pointed off to this and interestingly also on the non-RF bit the more sensible looking electron we have these traces now my guess is, is these are artificially lengthened traces to reduce any form of latency that might occur in the differential signals because I can imagine this thing using differential signals to compare with each other to check if it's correct. But the, that is all really on this side. You do get this strange artifact around the tuning screw though so I'm not entirely sure what this is about but we've got another RFE type transistor here. So we shall move on to the other side where it is a bit more interesting. There's a much larger RF stage too. This also looks like your standard fiberglass PCB format because some of these are actually made of aluminium, these PCBs, for extra noise protection. Noise is a big problem in RF. Right, the next section, the top section, which leads to the two outer pins, is the actual main stage that the RF comes in. And one thing you'll also notice is that the back end is very much exactly the same as to the other B and C connectors. So this does seem to be outputting at least four different or two different signals which are multiplexed. Now the real interesting meaty stuff is truly under the RF shield and once again we have another one of those tuning screws. So if we're just to remove the RF shield, I've had to precariously balance it so just bear with me here, it might fall over, there we go. We are revealed of a scene that's not too dissimilar to what I saw years ago when I dismantled one of these, although I do not know where the hell I got it, the first one. And we have more of this chip conductive foam that you mount chips in underneath. Underneath the shielding is 
if I can get my hands around the right way, a very similar affair in the way of little tuning bits of ferrite and whatnot and all that good jazz. So here we have a clear path. Yeah. Internally in this hull is actually a tiny little metal rod which is soldered in here, which sticks out sort of halfway down the tube going towards the front. That's pretty standard, that was in the same one. And this is another point of pickup. These braided bits which are wired for a vite are actually for grounding to ensure a good grounding. But we also have, as this one comes through here, it goes through RF transistors and at each stage it's broken out in its external to the board as there's actual slots in the shielding to allow it to be braided out and then there's all this strange tracing which goes down the side but mostly up round here to some sort of pre-amplifier end and also comes out this side but there doesn't seem to be much in the way of data coming down here we also have a very similar sort of output here and here to the other side of the board so once again we've got very much reuse however we don't seem to have the 10 gigahertz labeling telling us the frequencies and the actual back ends of the stage it's very so back to where we were before the bloody memory card ran out and then the PC had a hissy fit on me is we also have this strange circuit here with one of these strange tuning units we're going to call these tuning units any RF experts watching will hopefully add to the information that's being given here and further everyone's knowledge now interesting as well as the RF sections being brought down here from both sides there's another trans RF transistor they also go into the points to the other board on the other side which is where they go through this stage notice it's before they hit this stage as well so this is a very specialist stage we don't have any of the fan things in this particular design although they do appear in other designs as I've seen before and we also from this middle point we also have this strange arrangement of pins and set outs going into the transistor here what I am presuming is the base pin, although I'm probably wrong because I don't have the data sheets of the transistors. But interestingly, none of it seems to be interfacing with any of the jazz hiding in the corners up here. So that's a rather interesting little look at some RF circuitry that just about everyone has. Most people have satellite TV in some form or another. We used to have Sky, but we're now on FreeSat. And there's two potentially very interesting possible uses for these outside of ham amateur radio. I will put links in the description to some of the resources I've found, especially the amateur radio ham PDF document. An interesting read and quite complicated. So there should be some good amount of learning in there for you all. So the two most interesting uses outside of ham amateur radio that have come to mind is some sort of extension to your spectrum analyzer to get more frequency or a low noise pre-amplifier as these things are receiving data from satellites so the signals are definitely going to be in the minus hundred and something decibels so it could be a good analog add-on for your spectrum analyzer or even potentially build a spectrum analyzer out of it. Here's an example of a television one that would be used to measure equipment like this but only from the 80s. There'd be no way I'll get a brand new spectrum analyzer, not with what they cost. And the other thing that comes to mind is why if you combine that with a microwave transformer and created some form of rudimentary radar system. So you could put it on the top of your house and then you'd have a scanning rotating radar, which are certainly projects I would quite like to either embark on myself or at least attempt at a later state when there's more time and I have 
more knowledge in how the RF actually works and what all this funky voodoo black magic strangeness is and why there is no solder mask on there is a complete unknown to me maybe the insulation properties have some weird wibbly wobbly frequency changey wibbly wobbly tiny whiny effects or something who knows but hey nevertheless although I don't really understand what's going on in here it is rather interesting and unlike a lot of circuits with RF you can at least see where the signal is going because once it goes into here it tends to vanish off into I squared C or whatever interfaces they use on these things obviously it's not going to be I squared C in this but it's an example anyway thanks for watching personally a thoroughly interesting teardown and I do hope you enjoyed thanks for watching and good night to you all. Hopefully I can get this uploaded tonight. That made the first in a very long time. One thing I also forgot to note, this red glue holding it together is not conductive. I'd imagine it's some form of silicon. Which is an interesting choice, bearing in mind these need to be fully sealed. But then that could have something to do with the conductive foam we saw on the bottom, which allows it to contact conductive areas of the board.